Hey there, physics. Sorry I'm out today, but I'm going to talk you through some energy and work stuff here today, specifically work and what we can do with work and calculations on work. So we've, we've already sort of defined work before, that it's the energy that's transferred to or from an object by applying a force along its displacement. So if something's moving sideways, then you apply a force in the same direction it's moving. But not all forces actually cause the object to move. Uh, only force that change the motion will do work on the object. So this is one of the things to kind of pay attention to. So that's really only if the force is in the same direction or in the opposite direction that the object is moving. <coughs> now when we talk about positive work, um, we need to apply a force in the same direction as the object's motion, which we've talked about this before, but the force and velocity or force and displacement have to be in the same direction. And you just need to consider like speeding up or slowing down. Like if you push it in the same direction it's moving, then it will speed up. And to decrease the energy, do negative work, we'd apply a force in the opposite direction. So if it's moving forwards, a backwards force like friction would do negative work on this object. And again. And now here, what we think is that any force that's perpendicular does not change the energy of the system. So that's considered to be zero work. So if the force is perpendicular to the motion. And again, you can think about speeding up, slowing down that same way, that this sort of force wouldn't speed up or slow down, so that's why it's zero work. And these are the equations that we've seen before. Um, we looked at these ones in class last time. We said it was the that work was equal to the force along the path, and I'm writing this here now as force parallel to the displacement times the distance or displacement. Or remember as well that work is equal to the change in energy. So now we're going to look at some situations, and I want you to think about them and see if work is being done or not. So we've got friction, skidding a, sc a car to a stop. Is that using work or not? Uh, a full push-up, starting down, pushing up, going back down to where you started again. <clears throat> Gravity acting on a rock, thrown off a cliff. A person pushes with a 20 newton force on a wall. And a UPS man holds a box as he walks it to the door. So these are my five situations. And I want you to think about which of these ones work is done and which ones work is not done. You might want to pause it here for a moment to consider. All right, well, let's look at this together. We got here that here are the situations where work was done. These two examples, friction, skidding a car to a stop, and gravity acting on a rock thrown off a cliff. We want to know are these positive work or negative work? Well, in the case of friction slowing the car down, We've got the car here and friction's backwards as the car's moving forwards and so this would be an example of negative work whereas with the ball falling down it's moving down and the force is down so this would be an example of positive work now here are the ones where no work is done and we can talk about why no work was done in each of these for the push-up well you push yourself up and then you went back down so you did sort of positive work on the way up because you're pushing in the direction that uh that you're moving and then negative work on the way back down. So the distance was zero because you got back to where you started from. You go up and down. And if you're pushing against a wall, well, again, the wall doesn't move unless you're stronger than I am. Uh, you're not gonna knock the wall down so you won't be doing any work on it. <clears throat> and for the last one here, uh, there's no work done because the force is perpendicular to the direction of motion. As the box is being carried sideways, the person has to apply an upwards force on it to keep it from falling. Now, this is one of those sort of classic examples. Uh, almost certainly you will come across a question like this on a quiz or a test that talks about like either uh, somebody holding a, carrying a suitcase or a tray, like a waiter tray or something that's, because they're applying an upwards force on it and it's moving sideways, then that means that there's no work being done. <clears throat> All right, next up we've got some written examples and some problems. And so we're gonna use the equations that we've got so far. In this case, a four kilogram crate is being pulled from rest of a distance of nine meters by a 200 Newton horizontal force. And we wanna know how much work is done by the person pulling the crate. Okay, so I'm gonna go on to the next screen here and look at, here's what I've already written down. And just sort of a drawing, it's being pulled by a 200 Newton force along the path of nine meters. And so we can just use the equation that we've been using. 
work is equal to the force parallel to the direction of motion times the distance. And if we plug our numbers in, we get 200 times nine, which is 1800 joules of energy is how much is added to the object as it's moving. <clears throat> All right, so now we have a similar question. This time it says a four kilogram crate is pulled from rest for a distance of nine meters by 200 Newton force at a 60 degree angle above the horizontal. And so we have the same thing that we did before, but how much work is being done in this case? Now it's the same force, but it's at a different direction. It's not exactly horizontal, uh, it's diagonal. And if we look at a drawing of that, we can see that the force is kind of upwards and to the right. <coughs> and because of this, we really need to figure out what component of that force is in the direction of the motion. So we need to figure out the parallel part of that force. So which part of how much of this force is actually pushing straight to the right is the idea. And so the parallel force is going to be the X component of this force. And if you go ahead and dry out your triangle, you would wind up with something that looks a little bit like, you know, like this. This would be your F X and your F Y. You know, if this is your angle 60 degrees, we can look at those there. And as we continue on, so it's going to be, in this case, it would be 200 cosine 60 because we're looking at the adjacent side of the triangle at F X. And if you plug that in on your calculator, you should get 100 newtons, 200 cosine 60. And then since the work is equal to the force that's in the direction of motion times the distance, it's that 100 newtons that's in the direction of motion times the nine meters, which gives us 900 joules of energy. And so the interesting thing is you can get really, if it's in exactly in the direction of motion, we could get 1800 joules of energy. If it was exactly opposite the direction of motion, we could get negative 1800 joules of energy. So that's how much energy we're removing from the object. Or we can get any number in between those based on the angles. The more in the same direction it's going, the closer to 1800 it'll be. The more in the opposite direction, the closer to negative 1800 it'll be. And if it's purely perpendicular, then we would get zero. <clears throat> All right, so now we've got a similar question. Four kilogram crate is pulled from rest for a distance of nine meters by a 200 Newton kilogram horizontal force. How much does the kinetic energy of the crate change? So that's the difference here is we're figuring out what's the change in kinetic energy. We found the work, but we don't know the change in kinetic energy. And so we already saw this before. We said that the work was... Um, given to us as 1800 joules of work and one thing is that the work is the change in energy and in this case that energy is going to kinetic energy so the work is the change in energy which is the change in kinetic energy and since it asked us for that we could just say well it's got to be 1800 joules as the change in energy for this example now our next question is what's the final speed of the crate after nine meters pulling well, here we're looking for the final speed. We just figured out what the change in kinetic energy was, and the problem said it started at rest, so we knew that our initial energy was zero joules, our final energy was 1,800 joules, and the mass is four kilograms. So if we go through and do the calculation, we get one half mv squared for our kinetic energy equation. If we plug all of our numbers in, we get this. Doing a few steps of math, I'm just multiplying a half times four to get the two, dividing both sides by two, and re- organizing and I get that V squared equals 900 which means that V has to be equal to the square root of 900 which is 30 meters per second as the velocity so hopefully that makes some sense we've kind of done those kinds of questions so far quite a bit <clears throat> now this is maybe our challenge question for us is uh, a police officer measures the skid marks at a car accident the skid marks were 100 meters long for the 2000 kilogram car through calculation, the police officer measured the total friction force that was acting the car to be uh, 17,000 newtons. And we want to know what was the initial velocity of the car. Well, let's take a look. If we draw a little picture, we see it was moving uh, 100 meters and that the friction force was actually backwards because it was slowing the car down. And so what that means is that, well, this is a negative work, an example of negative work. So as we calculate this, 
we're gonna actually plug our force in as negative because it's in the opposite direction of the distance or displacement. And so I'll say here, set negative 17,000 times 100, which gives me negative 1.7 million joules of energy. That's how much the energy changed. So since our final energy we stopped, means our initial energy was 1.7 million joules of energy. And so then we can just go through and say, well, if that's how much energy we have, we can use the, plug it into our one, uh, Ke equals one half mv squared equation. And then if I go through the math, uh, I get that v squared is equal to 1,700. And so v is equal to the square root of 1,700, which is 41.23 meters per second. And so we can go through and do some more complicated questions using these methods. Now, we're going to do one last thing in this video. We're going to talk through what happens if you try to graph the work of an object. Well, so let's say that we have a constant net force of 10 newtons acting on an object, causing it to move a distance of 10 meters. Well, then you would say we could find the work just by using the equation we did, force times distance. That would just be 10 times 10, 100 joules of work. Easy enough. But we'd also graph this instead. And this, this will be something that will make sense in just a moment, why we might do this, but we could draw a graph of force versus distance. And so for the whole 10 meters, we're going, we have a force of 10 newtons in the direction of our path. And so we can figure out then that actually this area of the graph is the work, the base times height. So in this case, it would be distance times the force, or force times distance is 10 times 10, the same sort of thing we did. We get 100 joules right here. And so it might seem silly to do it this way, but here's the thing. Our equation force times distance, work is equal to force times distance, only works if the force is constant because we can't plug in like a changing value as we go through. But if we have changing values, we can use a graph to figure out the work that's done. And so in this case, here's sort of the, the big idea of graphing work is that for a force versus distance graph, the area under the graph is the work done. I put some stars here because I want you to know this is an important concept. So go ahead and pause the video and write this down somewhere in your notes if you haven't written it down yet. And so this is the big idea. And now what we can do is we can look at things with changing forces and we can actually figure out how much work is done or how much energy is transferred. And so here's an example of something. I've got a force, uh, force versus displacement. And since this is a triangle shape, we can just use our equation for a triangle, half the base times the height. So it's one half times the, the displacement distance there, point oh, point 0.1, and the force is, maximum force is 20 newtons. So as we plug it in, one half times point 0.1 times 20. And if we plug that into our calculators, I think you will get a value of one joule. <coughs> right there. All right, we'll do one last one here maybe just a, a slight bit more complicated. Uh, we've got here a diagonal increasing graph, then it's constant force. And so for each of these ones, we can kind of now break this up into two shapes. We'll have the triangle on the left and the rectangle on the right. And so to figure out the area here, it's half the base times the height. So it'd be half times five times five, which comes out to be 12 and a half if you do the work on it, 12 and a half joules of work. And then on the other side, it's going to be 5 times 5 because it's a rectangle. And 5 times 5 is 25 joules of work. And then what we'll do is we'll just add those two together, 25 plus 12 and a half, and we get 13.5 joules. So this is um, our discussion of work and energy um, and transferring energy with work. So uh, thanks for watching. If you have any questions for me, uh, don't hesitate to ask. Um, we'll make sure that we get this stuff for you uh, so that it makes sense. But we'll be taking a look at some of the uh, some, some work pages in our packet. So just check in the agenda for the problems you're supposed to be working on today. Good luck. See you later.